Welcome to LetteringWorld.com. Hi, I'm Kevin, and welcome. I want to show you another way to create a hand lettering quote in a thick and thin script. Now, this exercise is for people who are not comfortable or knowledgeable in using a quilt pen or a copper plate pen to draw a script. This method will help you have more control and add weight variation to any parts of a letter, hence the name Built Up Script Letters. So this is a quote I penned out. As we zoom in, you can see I drew my X height guidelines in pencil. So I did many overlays to adjust and shift the layout, adjusted the line spacing, and adjusted ascenders and descenders to fall in the correct places. So that's why the lines are staggered the way they are, to accommodate ascenders and descenders. So once you get the rough layout you like, put another clean sheet of paper over your final rough drawings to follow your sketches as a guide. The copy paper is thin enough that you can see the underlying image. You can also use a light table to see the image even better and be more accurate. So tape down the underlying image and your clean sheet of paper so they will not move as you're drawing. Since I will be talking about the parts of a letter, I thought it'd be a good idea to include this chart for your reference on terminology. Look it over, and if you need to refer back to it at some point, just rewind the video. These are the two types of pens I like to use for this type of exercise. One is the Pigma Micron 03 pen, and the other is a Sharpie Fine Point pen. The pen size may change depending on how big your lettering is. This final piece measures 6 inches wide by 7.5 inches tall. And you can get these pens at most craft stores. In drawing this mono weight line and also the weights, it's best to turn the paper as shown so you are always making strokes towards your body. Take short and slow strokes to be able to follow the shape of the letter and swashes. It's like using your wrist as a hinge, which acts like a compass. It will help you make more natural and smooth strokes. Once you start working over the letter, use a sheet of protective paper to put over it to not smear your lettering or get ink on your hand. So once you get to the end of a curve or serpentine, stop and turn the paper to draw the next shape. So you keep your strokes coming towards your body. Continue to draw the complete letter as a mono weight line. Once you are done with that letter, you can then go back and begin to add weight to your letter. So it's good to get the letter form drawn gracefully as a mono weight line first, and then add weight later. So I'll speed up the video a bit while I complete the line drawing of the eye so we can get to the section where we'll be adding weight to the mono weight line. So now you can begin to add weight to the letter. So start with the main downstroke and add weight to both sides of the line, swinging the weight out and gracefully back to the thin line. You can keep adding more weight as needed. Also, turning the paper upside down helps to see weighting and letter forms better, so rotating the letter is helpful for that too.
On secondary weights, it's important to understand how a copper plate pen add weights to a letter so your piece will have well distributed and balanced weights. So secondary weights should be thinner than the main strokes of a letter as a general rule. It will really help with legibility. Also as you start to overlap strokes, there should not be two of the same weights going over each other. It's good to have classical examples of script lettering research on hand to have as a reference for shapes and weight placement. Type styles like Bickham script, Edwardian script, and Sloop are three great examples to show letter forms and weight distribution. So I'll speed up the video again and you can watch as I work and turn and finish adding weights to this letter. As you start to draw the lower case, just know that since the letters are smaller than the large capital letters, be careful to not add too much weight to these letters, as they can get clunky and heavy looking. As you write out your monoweight lettering, try to keep a nice rhythm in the letter forms and plan your ascenders and descenders well to fill empty spaces. Now, in drawing these thick and thin script letter forms, it really helps to understand what the quill or pointed copper plate pen does when writing script letters. Basically, when drawing a downstroke, there will be added weight because of the quill pen widening from pressure. And when drawing an upstroke, there will be a thin because the pressure is lifted. Also, there can be heavier weights by applying more pressure to the pen and lighter weights for applying less pressure. When writing out letters, when there is a double letter like these P's, it's good to make them different to give the lettering a hand-done look. Continue to pen out your letters and work in turn as needed to add weight on the different shapes always trying to pull the pen towards your body. You'll see that it really helps you get smoother arcs and better drawn serpentines. On secondary swashes, like ascenders and descenders, there doesn't need to necessarily be added weight on every single stroke, but the very subtle weight additions really add the beauty to a script letter. So as you look at the overall letter, make weight adjustments as needed to have somewhat consistent weights. It's important to not have two overlapping strokes that both have the same weight. A good example is the double P here, where the descender on the second P overlaps the first. Make the stroke thin as it overlaps the downstroke weight of the first P, as shown.
on short strokes, such as lowercase letters, it's okay to draw out the letters normally. But when there are longer strokes and swashes, use the short strokes to control the serpentine as shown on this H. In drawing out these letters, sometimes I'll keep writing out words and skip the swashes, then come back later and finish adding them in. I think it helps you keep a rhythm when writing a longer sentence. You'll see that in adding weight to the lower case, since the letters have such a short x height, that it doesn't take much to add weight to it. So again, just be careful about adding too much weight. Just start off with a little bit and add more as you look at it overall. When drawing big swashes, it helps to start drawing at an intersection of some letters. That way it's more hidden where the stroke meets. But you'll get pretty good at having the swashes meet up well, like in the ascenders of the H here. As you look at the lettering, you can continue to add more weight to any areas that you think need it to balance out the overall piece. Remember to look at it upside down too. It helps to see any problem areas. So I continue the process to complete my quote and you'll see how my final piece looks. I scanned the lettering and brought it into Adobe Photoshop, turned it to white and used it over a photo I took. So here's the final piece. And thanks for watching and happy lettering.